Okay, hey everyone, welcome to this video. Today I'm going to be talking about some of the amazing announcements which came to Microsoft Teams with Microsoft Ignite. Not all of these features are coming directly this year, but I'm going to be talking through them. If any of you knew what I worked on at Microsoft in my last internship, it was actually as a program manager on basically stuff which supports Microsoft Teams, Skype and Azure communication services. So you can sort of see why I'm so hyped right now. So I'm going to go through some of them with you at this moment and let's go ahead and just go through the, the, the top huge one which I want to mention as we are going into this huge conversation of how do we mix, you know, mixed reality, virtual reality with our everyday lives, high bit working. It, it's, it's such a interesting thing to think about. Now, I'm super into mixed reality. My university project right now is on mixed reality for for supermarkets and stuff so let's go ahead and talk about this so if anyone uh, has been keeping up with Microsoft you know about Microsoft Mesh is basically this shared environment where people can meet together in a mixed reality environment they're able to hey join with a HoloLens a mixed reality device a virtual reality device their mobile phone a desktop whatever it be and you are sort of in this environment where you're talking with each other and it's really awesome. So the announcement that came, which is really big here, is that next year in 2022, we're going to be having Microsoft Mesh with Microsoft Teams as well. So you're going to be able to join Microsoft Teams and interact with people in a virtual reality environment. Similar to if you've used the app Spatial before, it's sort of like that because if you if you've used spatial it's it's a really cool experience you basically join with a hololens and then when you join you're able to see other people in the room with you and you interact and you can have like shared things in in the room and you have spatial audio it's really cool but as you can see in this demonstration here the experience looks amazing it's literally incredible, but this looks like it's taking it to the next level. Honestly, this is going to be really cool. So another cool thing coming to Microsoft Teams is you're going to have this new scheduling form where you're able to assign roles to people. It's sort of similar if you go into your meeting options normally. The current procedure for doing this is that you create your meeting and then you go into the calendar invite and you hit meeting options. And then from there, you're able to change someone to be a presenter and you in, in your meeting you can promote people to presenter and make them an attendee etc but you're now able to do this straight away through the meeting invite similar to how you can or could do with live events in Microsoft Teams so that's an amazing thing which is coming also what you're going to be able to have is the ability to see who is raising their hands but in which order because sometimes you create a meeting and you have multiple people who have raised their hands the problem is you don't know who has raised their hands first and it can kind of get confusing because you will have someone who raised their hands literally just a second ago but you've had your hand raised for like 10 minutes and they'll get their question asked before you so this ability will remove that and um, it will keep a nice queuing system another thing in meetings itself is that you're going to be able to hide your own video so normally in meetings you are able to turn off incoming video and you can just toggle on and off your video but you're gonna be able to hide your own video so if you don't like yourself you know being in the little corner whilst you're presenting and just seeing yourself now you won't have to worry about that and also there'll be a new layout for the mobile app with the meeting options you'll be able to swipe up and you'll see all these options. Okay so moving on to Microsoft Teams rooms and devices so this isn't perhaps applicable to people who just work from home but if you go into an office and you use the Teams room ability basically what happens is you go into the office and then you're able to join a meeting from this device right and this device everyone can see it on the big screen but then the camera's pointing at the whole desk right and you have people scattered around the desk and you can't tell okay so this person on the left is this person in teams you know you can't see their name because it gives the the name of the room right so what the change here is going to be that you'll be able to join 
when you go into this Teams room, you join from the actual Teams room device, but you're able to join from your actual personal device too, or your work device which you have with you, and this is going to be known as companion mode. So when you join from a Teams room device, what will happen is you'll be able to join from your own device which you have with you in companion mode. So what will happen is your video from your own device that you have with you will have a video feed going into the meeting, but the, the view that you have on the whole Teams room that you're seeing with every other participant, your video will be excluded from that because it's joined in companion mode. There's no point seeing yourself whilst you're in the Teams room environment. And also now everyone will be able to identify, hey, you're this person from the meeting because instead of seeing the room name, they'll be able to see, okay, this person is in the, the room with their own name and stuff. So that that's a change coming with Teams rooms. So if any of you have faced this problem in the past, perhaps you're gonna have a meeting with a Facebook employee the problem is you can't join from a team zooms device so this is actually gonna come as a change to direct guest join which is the feature you use basically uh, partners are using to let you join third party meetings so you're gonna be able to now join from a team zooms device into a blue jeans meeting as well as go to meetings as well and uh, that's coming next year. So some of you may have heard of the news I believe it was earlier this year when Sennheiser retired their consumer line basically I guess of devices so headphones but they're still going to maintain their prosumer line so if you think about a professional microphone and such they actually got bought by this like medical company I believe so I don't know what's happening with the consumer line yet since I still see them selling headphones but what they have announced so they're still selling I guess under the name Sennheiser is that they're going to join Epos and Yearlink where they have this new smart AI microphone and it's going to be used basically in these like conference rooms where it's going to have features like transcription capabilities, uh, focusing, whatever. And and yeah, so that's another thing Sennheiser, Sennheiser's not totally gone. Nice to hear from Sennheiser since they've been in the game for so long. HP also announced some stuff, so they have announced this thing previously in the year, so it was HP Presence. So I believe they're showcasing it now again with Microsoft Ignite. So the HP Presence meeting space solutions kits that you're getting you're gonna have a host of different things so you have the hp presence mini pc and the hp presence control center and you also have this like ai camera 4k i guess i think it's ai this audio video bar which is tuned by bang and olufsen and also you have hp presence talk satellite microphones that is a mouthful and finally you're gonna have this way to now check into rooms so you can either check into a room or you can leave it to the sensors and they can basically tell okay so this room hasn't been checked in yet we'll let it be re-released into the pool of rooms available for people to use. There's so many more announcements with Microsoft Teams devices. As you can see, you have the Yearlink Desk Vision AI 024 with its large 24 inch display. You've got peripheral devices. So there'll be some native Bluetooth capabilities with Microsoft Teams devices. So basically you can answer a call from your headset. You're gonna be able to raise your hand from your headset. Now, if any of you have done music performances, you may know or perhaps theatrical performances, you may know of the term of green rooms. So this is a really cool idea, is that similar to with Microsoft Teams Live events, was the ability for you to have this sort of green room. And if you're familiar with music productions or acting and stuff like that, you know that you could have a green room where everyone could just meet beforehand and discuss, hey, this is, you know, the warm up I'm going to be doing, let me just practice a bit on the flute or the piano and stuff, right? So you're going to have this ability to go into meetings and have this green room. So people aren't able to join meetings straight away. I think this is going to be really great for teachers or people doing events. So they don't have to just jump into another call and have a small discussion and then join the main call. They can just have one invite and join that meeting invite early. You're going to be able to, similar to Microsoft Teams Live events, control what's visible for attendees in the event. So you can see you're able to control who is being shown to the meeting attendees. So remember I was talking about you being able to say, okay, when you create a meeting invite, you can say this person's a co-organizer, this person's a presenter, this person is going to be an attendee. What, it, what is a co-organizer? So a co-organizer basically has the same permissions as you as the person who creates the meeting in the first place. So when you create the meeting, you're going to be able to create, you know, people as being attendees, co-organizers, presenters, 
and these co-organizers will be able to say okay so i want to change these meeting options or i want to be able to create this poll i want to be able to change these audio settings and that's basically what a co-organizer can do and you can assign up to 10 people to, to be a co-organizer so another thing which is also similar to in teams live events you're going to be able to have a q a panel as well so yes you'll be able to still have a chat but a dedicated Q&A panel where you can post questions and answers and you can upvote people's questions and you can see, okay, so there's a private questions section, your published questions, etc. You can see this in my Teams live events video. There's going to be integration with other stuff. For example, you have C events uh, over here. You also have, hey, shared channels and chats with Teams. So this is cool because now you're going to be able to say, okay, so I want to be able to share this channel or this chat with people outside of the organization you won't have to just say hey add someone to a team you can add them to a shared channel in terms of actual chats and stuff you can see here you can change your chat density and you can also have a compact view so this enables you to have 50 percent more on screen which is really awesome and also there's going to be some cool things so now you can react with more of the emojis as you can see that here are the windows 11 emojis which have now come out so that's over 800 3D emoji as well. Another cool feature you're gonna get is this ability to say if you have a message you wanna send to someone, you're gonna be able to schedule them now. So say for example, you, you know, you're coming to the end of the day, but you have this important form which you need your team to fill out. But, you know, people aren't gonna be checking their messages at this late time, and you don't want to give people notifications after work hours. So what you can do is you can schedule the message now to go at a custom time or use the suggested times that it gives you so that hey tomorrow morning when they log on it sends and that's based off the time that you've set and that I think is really awesome because that's really thinking about well-being of others and being considerate similar to the feature you have in Outlook when you can delay your emails going out. Now another challenge is when you work in an organization when people are in different time zones as you they're different countries it's quite hard sometimes to know okay when is this person going to be online i try to think about people's time zones when i message people because if i'm messaging someone who's in the us and i'm you know messaging them at 9 a.m my time if then pacific time it's going to be perhaps like 1 a.m for them so it's quite hard to sort of think about this and then try to remember everyone's time zones perhaps you look at their phone number if they have one and you can guess where they are but now you're going to be able to just simply see hey this person by hovering over them you can see okay this person is in this time zone and you can see how far ahead or behind they are and also there's going to be this new layout for searches so you can see the all section the messages the people and the file section as well so there's going to be platform enhancements new collaborative apps so hey accessible business data you have increased collaboration real-time engagement and uh, this is cool this is cool stuff hey you have azure communication services teams interoperability so basically this will enable you to extend these teams meetings to other apps and services so here you actually have scott van vliet so you can see him next to some code and this having you know the video feed from microsoft teams also being surfaced into this website over here which is in the Teams UI. So a good example of Azure communication services being used outside of Microsoft Teams itself is the ability for you to have meetings with LinkedIn, right? So LinkedIn added the feature I think like three months ago now it was released where you can now have meetings with LinkedIn using the mobile app or using the website and this was built using Azure communication services. So here they're announcing more integration with the business application side of things so you have power bi so you're going to have this app now within microsoft teams which is great you don't have to go to the website you also have this embed teams chat option which is going to let you now embed teams chats into power platform stuff power apps itself actually which is cool and then also pva so power virtual agencies so so if anyone's used to chatbots so the nice thing here is it's announced that you're going to be able to have the ability to now have more robust chatbots which proactively message people based on set conditions or answers, right? And also the ability to support group interactions in channel conversations too. Here's a Jira Cloud integration, which is really awesome. If you're not using Azure DevOps, or if you're not using GitHub for your project management or product management, you can also use Jira Cloud in here too, which is great. Uh, 
as a here SAP sales and service core uh, in Teams as well. So a bunch of things which are being added so that you natively can just interact with these features without having to switch applications, which is quite useful if you just have one screen and also the ability to have all of these apps in the newly redesigned store, which is really cool. So similar to the Microsoft store being redesigned, you also have the uh, Microsoft Teams app store, which is redesigned. Here's some more other features. So you have Teams phone and contact center, expanding the dynamics. This is five customer service, uh, bandwidth control policy. So this is cool. Here you can disable video and stuff. So it helps with the network. Say if everyone has a port network, this is useful. You know, you have dynamic E911 for US based users. E911 is basically like emergency calling and stuff. Operator Connect is generally available, so Operator PSTN service for Teams phone, uh, Teams calling plans, you can make Microsoft to Operator. Cool. And then yeah, SIP Gateway, so Teams calling on legacy phones, this is great. And then some uh, security and compliance things, so you know, data retention policies, co-authoring, auto-labeling, uh, availability, information barriers, channel sites management, uh, graph export API. So you can see now even the Microsoft Graph is expanding here too. So now you're going to be able to export customer messaging information and data for compliance SaaS applications. And that's available right now. And then you have some uh, management stuff. So admin center search, you have priority account collaboration, admin app discovery, user requests for apps. This is awesome. Okay, so one uh, example, I guess, there's this app, I can't remember what it's called, but it's for well-being. But say, hey, you want the Jira app, for example, and Jira isn't enabled within Teams for you, you can then go ahead and request this, and that's going to be quite awesome. Policy enhancements, device types, there's a Surface Hub as a type of device. I already mentioned the SIP gateway, so basically, yeah, adding this older legacy telephone hardware, and graph APIs, uh, device health, workspace management, scope teams, device administration role, device analytics, that's cool. Uh, management alerts, this is cool as well. So I'm guessing stuff like in tune and stuff. Um, rely on this, so manage services for teams rooms. Well, so like updates and stuff can be worked on by experts or trusted partners. New planning and inventory management capabilities partner multi-tenant management portal, a deeper insights into rooms, new onboarding wizard in the Microsoft 365 admin center. Okay, this is awesome. Okay, so how is it one like? Let's change that. Oh, there's someone else who got to the bottom. Three likes. Yeah, awesome updates. <laughs> so this is so cool. There's so many cool new features. Let me know which feature you are most excited about. To be honest, I'm super excited about the the mesh integration with Microsoft Teams. That's gonna be so awesome for people, especially, you know, in this hybrid environment where, you know, hey, I'm doing a lot of uni stuff remote. I'm not at the campus. I'm able to interact with people at university in meetings, but what if I could interact with a, you know, virtuality environment with people who are in the actual physical environment too. So this is all really exciting and I hope you all enjoy. I've got a get ready for the events I've got later on today for Microsoft Ignite. But let me know if you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. Take care and bye-bye.